You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, we were just having a feast with the whole pack, and uh, well, Rannick is being a bit of a smarty pants, and he's trying to make me all jealous by bouncing a big boob wolf girl in his lap, and hmm, I don't know, that might be working. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please enjoy the video, and let's jump right into it. Farm Shane, you're up. All right, <clears throat> let's do it. Even being this close to me, the bunny tries to act all tough, giving me aggravated looks, but he's not intimidating me one bit. Especially not with especially not with that dumb barcode tattoo on his... Tattoo of his. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hmm, oh. Oh, no. What's that look on his face? Oh no! What's in the mead? What's in the mead? <laughs> At least try our mead. It's to die for. Yes! The mead! The Elder Wolf claps his hands merrily. Curly cheered, by, curly cheered up by the prospect. At the corner of the eye, I can see Rannick is still engrossed in a conversation with that female, and it almost looks like if he was taunting me with that flirtatious behavior. Is that the piss we sell to the tigers? Is it the proper one? I'm offended by that question, Chief. The White Wolf responds teasingly, dismissing Trist and leaning over the table to personally pour the old male a hornful. The Chief drinks it up thirstily and releases a long, satisfied sigh. Ah! That's the good stuff. Pour that kid some. Let him learn what real ambrosia tastes like. I instinctively remove my hand at the words, and I immediately see Tano's eye center on me with a knowing smile. Fuck! I just gave myself away. My heart begins to race, and again he looks right into my eyes, the smile widening. He can definitely sense my anxiety, which I assume only confirms his suspicions. But to my surprise, he does not give me away. He rinses my cup with some water, flushing the contents towards the fire and placing it back in front of me. He pours the mead, giving me a discreet wink. To your health, human! The chief shouts out, laughing heartily and raising his horn. The female finally jumps off Rannick's lap to grab her own chalice. I can hear every other wolf stand up, following the chief's suit, and I'm slightly confused as to what to do. I want to stand up as well, but Tano gently pressed down on my shoulder, letting me know I should stay in my seat. So that we may be rid of you, so that so that we may be rid of you. Oh, this is a couple of spelling errors. So that we may be so that we may be rid of you before long. Laughter erupts across the tables, and all the wolves howl in unison. To the humans' health. I feel a bush creep upon my face. As facetious as it might have been, it feels nice to have a toast made in my honor. Catch me! <laughs> ah! <laughs> and she's back where she started, spoiling the moment. But I can't even get annoyed at it, as my, as my attention is immediately drawn to the rabbit behind them. Trist is practically seething with anger, locking a spiteful gaze at me. What is your deal, bunny? Right! Let us give the youth some space and stretch our old paws. The last thing my old paws need is stretching. Have a your I have your favorite leaf. Ha! Huh. Should have started with that. The two males take their leave, and I lose my only palatable distraction. The situation with Rannick begins to annoy me so much that I do that all I can do that I do all I can not to look in their direction. I guess he can make me jealous. I'm so dumb. Rennick can do whatever he likes, while Trist can go fuck himself. No one can force me to face that table. Oh, what an evening. Drinks and wolf girls and lots of dudes without shirts. Ah, what a night. Instead, I observe the bonfire, where more and more wolves began dancing with loud and joyful music playing in the background. I recognize the sounds of fiddles, flutes, drums, and mandolin. The tunes they play are unexpectedly upbeat and very, very immerse energizing with happy growls filling the air every now and then. I can't help but bop to the rhythm, smile, a smile appearing seemingly out of nowhere. They're having so much fun and I almost wish I could join in the dance. It reminds me of something I must have known, a real party. I can see Verissa is back, freshly changed. Although she looks mostly fine, the wine stain is still quite visible. I hope it's not permanent. As far as I know, wine is pretty much game over for everything. I watch her dance merrily with some strapping male, many wolves pairing up around them. They all swirl, paw and paw, jumping and cheering each other on. 
Eventually, even Tano joins in, dancing with another male. This catches me by surprise. However, I notice a lot of the same-sex wolves dance in pairs, and they do so with equal further as opposite-sex couples. I guess that's not strange here, and it gives me an idea. I turn to Rannick, hearing that he's now tart-free. Tart-free. <laughs> oh, come on! You don't know her. She's just a nice girl. I smile gently, nodding my head towards the fire with an expectant gaze, but he frowns. I don't dance. He utters quietly, continuing with his drink. I keep staring at him expectantly, but he simply calls the female back. As usual, she quickly rushes into his arms. Miss me already? Rennick basically showers her with attention, and I have to look away, especially since Trist smirks at me with satisfaction. Ugh, this is going to drive me insane! I almost jump up as a paw lands on my shoulder. I look up to the white male who musters the most charming smile I've seen the entire night. Will you do me the honor? I blink, confused he'd want to dance with me, but the rhythm of the music takes a firm grip of my mind. I want to dance so badly. I look back at Rannick, who doesn't even notice us, caressing and flirting with that random stray. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, I love it! Fuck it. I shrug, looking up at the wolf who takes a hold of my hand and pulls me in close. He notices my confusion as I try to gauge the steps from others. <laughs> Just don't think about it and follow my lead. He's not wasting time, and filling up the rhythm of the melody guides my gait into a skip as we swirl off towards the bonfire. I cannot contain laughter as everything spins around us, with different wolves passing us by in the same jovial dance. Tano has a firm grip on me, pulling my body right against his form. He might be smaller than Rennick and less muscly, but equally as defined. I'm surprised at first by the proximity, but it allows him to better guide us in all the twists and turns, and there's plenty of those. It almost feels like some mad carnival ride. I blush, feeling his chin rest upon my head. Even his, even the small wolf dwarfs me. I surrender myself both to the music and to the wine, and we spin off into the wild dance as my screams of joy and laughter join the cacophony of howls and cheers. Tano is actually a good dancer, and I enjoy it for all it's worth. I rest my head against his breast, expecting the familiar smell of the forest. However, to my surprise, his scent is more earthy. My head gets dizzy with all the pivots and whirls, and I lose complete sense of time, just laughing into his chest. We could do this for the rest of the night, for all I care. Mind if I cut in? We suddenly come to a stop, and I notice Rannick standing in front of us with a rather aggravated expression. I can hardly catch my breath through the workout, but Tano pulls me in closer. Actually, yes. We're having fun, aren't we? The white wolf looks at me with a coy smile, and I'm nodding eagerly in agreement. Rannick had his chance. He can go back to his admirers and let me have some fun. Well, I insist. He's my charge. The Grey Wolf says sternly, grabbing hold of my arm. I furrow my brow at the crude gesture. Seriously, he's making a scene now? I thought you were busy. Was only watching after him. You're treading on dangerously thin ice, Tano. By all means, then. Tano reluctantly lets go of me and walks away, clear smirk on his muzzle. I narrow my eyes, wondering if this was always wondering if this was his plan all along. Rennick pulls me into a similar embrace Tano held me in, however he's much less gentle about it. He rushes in he rushes us into the dance, moving us along other pairs. Despite his bad mood, he's doing it quite graciously. I thought you said you can't dance. I mutter, clearly annoyed at this little looks a spectacle. I said I don't, not that I can't. He replies, equally irritated. I just roll my eyes, allowing the male to lead our tempo. A few moments ago, I would have traded anything for this dance, but right now, I just can't wait for it to be over. I'm not okay with being a rope in their stupid tug of war. For someone so smart, you sure know how to make a fool of yourself. Ah, you're the one to talk. I want to add something about that shameless flirting, but I can see he's in no mood for a conversation. I had fuel to the fire when it's already burning my skin. I just resigned myself to his lead. Eventually the song ends and Rannick releases his hold on me. I look up at him with clear disappointment while he repays me with a hurt gaze. I seriously don't get you. I sigh, returning to the table and taking my seat next to the white wolf. Rennick follows suit. However, he stops and instead heads towards a nearby group of wolves, engaging with them in an idle chatter. I feel Tano's gaze drill into me with a provocative smile and all I can do is face him with a dumb expression. I know that dance was a setup, but I also wanted to stick it up to Rannick. Guess we both got what we wanted in the end. Trish tries to taunt me again, but I smirk nastily, remembering the rabbit stew we made the other day. 
scurry about your business, bunny, unless you get eaten if you're not too careful. I might fear these wolves, but you've got a long way to go to intimidate me. I just sit there slouching, resigned to Tano's company. With no one at the table, he seems almost disinterested in me. I guess everything he did was for show, or to elicit a reaction from either me or Rannick. He still serves me some food, but my appetite is long gone. Eventually, Rannick returns to his seat, his expression slightly softer than before. Perhaps he cooled off. From what, though, I cannot tell. I'm still confused about everything that's going on here. It's quite fascinating to see a human up close. Here we go again. Incredibly meek and fragile species, still unaccountably present. He rubs my shoulder, but I don't protest. I'm beyond caring at this point. Besides, each time I did, Rannick felt the need to be my knight in shining armor, and it really doesn't help to keep our charade going. Or at least keep whatever's left of it. Most feels like Mother Moon gave up on you halfway through your creation. Isn't that right? He asks with a cruel, mocking tone, knowing full well I cannot retort. His sudden shift in attitude makes it clear he knows I understand them. I must admit, I began to warm up to your gratifyingly mute friend. He faces Rannick, whose fur bristles with anger like I've never seen before, his fangs showing in a snar snarl of barely contained fury. Even Trist is freaked out, meaning he has rarely seen his former master in such a state. He's not my friend. The Grey Wolf spits through a growl, giving me a cold stare. It hurts me to hear it more than I thought it would, especially with Trist smiling in satisfaction. I know Rannick doesn't mean it, but fuck. It's hard to keep things together with so many people trying to get at you, trying to get at you at this table. No. Oh. The White Wolf looks at me, clearly seeing my distress. He knows. He played us both like a fiddle. Guess it wasn't just Rannick who allowed himself to be led on a leash. Sorry, I just assume that since he wears your cloak, there's more to it. And you two dance so well. You make quite a pair. For once, I'd like to finish my meal without having to taste your bile, Tano. I was merely... Many times I had to put you back in line. It'd be tiresome to think I'd have to do so again, pup. The two older males interrupt his spat, looking at all three of us with annoyance. Why am I being stared at? I'm not even part of this, not actively at least. My apologies, Chief. The White Wolf bows respectfully and stands up. I'll take my leave. I'm incredibly tired and had too much to drink. I barely stifle a scoff, knowing full well he only had water. And I also need to get rid of that stain. Yo, he looks back at me, trying to ruffle my hair in a playful manner, but I tilt away. Enough is enough. I look forward to seeing more of your little hostage, Rannick. He's not. Yeah, yeah. I can see Rannick wants to continue the spar, but I cut him off with another angered stare. I don't want this to drag on, and thanks to my intervention, Tondo finally takes his leave and I can sigh in relief. I was hoping that the white wolf gone, Rannick would invite me to sit with him. However, I seem to have annoyed him. The gray wolf avoids looking at me. Whenever he does, he has a petulant expression. The dinner continues for quite a while longer, with everyone just talking merrily and drinking. I'm a lightweight, but I try to keep up as much as my body allows with all the wine passed around. Seeing Volgar talk with others and laugh is, is a refreshing view, giving me entirely new perspective on the male. He tries to keep stoic and silent most of the time, however, he allows himself an occasional smirk or chuckle. I can't partake in any conversation, but it is nice seeing it is nice seeing everyone so happy and so engaged. I have no memories, but I know I've never experienced anything so communal to think it's their daily and to think it's their daily routine is almost heartwarming. Whatever my life might have been before, I know it was much much lonelier than this. I see Trist's regular menacing expression changes to sudden shock. In fact, pretty much everyone is looking at me with slight confusion. You okay, Piglet? I jump up, realizing that Black Wolf scooted over to me, leading into my ear. So that's what spooked Trist. Vol being friendly. I look back I look to the black male with a smile, knowing full well I can't really respond with everyone watching. Tap once for yes, and twice for no. I sigh and tap once. I'm not exactly okay, but there isn't much we can do about it. I think Vool will notice that I'm not being truthful, and he, and he smiles knowingly. <laughs> will you have a drink with me? I don't drink with just anyone, but you've earned it. 
He nods towards my patched side and I chuckle. How could I refuse? I tap once on the table, to which the black wolf smiles with satisfaction. Wolger waves to Triss and he scurries quickly towards us with a rather worried expression. Again, the rabbit rushes towards us at neck-breaking speed, clearly demonstrating deference to those wolves. Usual. Now. The black male utters crudely and the rabbit nods. I must admit, watching him run behind the tables in such a panic does bring a smile to my face. He hastily returns with a familiar clay bottle. Fool dismisses him without a care and opens it with a satisfying pop. He takes my cup and slushes out the remaining mead I haven't finished towards the fire. I can see him fill it up with a clear liquid and the booze smell and the boozy smell hits my nose. Fuck! It's the moonshine again. I should have tapped twice, but too late to back out now. Don't mind him, he whispers softly, nodding towards Rannick and pouring my share. You can act like an idiot, but you learn to look past that. Oi, Rannick! Care to join us? The Grey Wolf looks at me with a rather concerned expression. Isn't that a bit much for him? Don't be such a den mother. The kid ain't a flower. He can take a lot. Vulgar winks at me, and I almost blush at the doable at the, du at the double entendre. I readjust myself and give Rannick a challenging look. He's reluctant at first, but finally smiles at me. Whatever annoyed him, whatever's annoyed him now is gone thanks to Vul's intervention. Rennick grabs his own cup, and the black male pours him some moonshine. Fuck! It really smells good. I mean, I'm sorry. Fuck! It really smells. I can't believe anyone would drink this willingly. It's almost nauseating, as if one gets drunk just by whiffing it. We raise our cups and clink them merrily. The two, male, the two males down the contents in one go. However, I'm nowhere near that drunk or brave. I try to chug at least half my share, but my stomach says definite no. I rub my mouth clean as they both laugh at me. <laughs> you said he wasn't a flower. Rennick chuckles mockingly, and I huff in annoyance. I'll show you a flower. I take the cup, holding in my breath, and empty it in one go, and in one go, and empty it in one go, knocking on the wood as I do so. Fuck, this tastes like shit! I bang the cup back onto the table and realize the more wolves are actually watching. I receive a round of applause, and even the chief is giggling at my defiant expression. Told you. Vul smirks at me approvingly. The dinner continues on, with Vulgar bringing me over a slice of that roasted boar that was teasing me over the past few hours with its smell. Killed it myself, he says proudly, placing a large slice in front of me. I nod towards him knowingly. Tenderloin, got you the best cut. He pulls out his dagger, twirling it between his fingers. As a sort of tribute. He leans towards my ears, whispering, You're the only thing I stabbed that walked away and lived. Enjoy that fact. I almost choke on my wine as, I bl as a blush floods my face. If gazes could kill, Trist would be my murderer. He's seething at the attention of Yule sho Vul showers me with. I'm not sure it's my pettiness or simply drunken fa phase, but I embrace the black wolf. It, it might have been a miscalculation as the male nearly pulls away from me, but in the last second, he reluctantly returns the embrace with one paw. The chief laughs, noticing us. That kid has a clear death wish. Try to rein yourself in, Vulgar. He's under ancestral protection. Wouldn't want to banish our greatest champion over a handsy human. The old male burst into laughter with many others following suit. I can see Vul giving me a rather annoyed gaze as we pull apart, but eventually he scoffs and ruffles my hair. Not to worry, Chief. The piglet has simply had too much to suckle on. I chortle and quickly cover my mouth, realizing I'm being too obvious about understanding the jokes. <laughs> I think everyone's a little too sloshed to notice. The merrymate continues, and now that pretty much everyone has had enough to drink, wolves start wandering around the tables, and the atmosphere becomes more casual. I simply observe, bathed in the orange glows of the bonfire, taking it all in. Is this how they live every day? It really seems like a wonderful place to call home. Well, you know, aside from the religious intolerance. I enjoy seeing Rannick in his element, chatted up by passers-by, laughing and being sociable. Different wolves come up to him, taking, talking about wrestling matches, sparring, and hunting. He's clearly an impressive individual, and many look upon and look up to him. And I can see females fawn over him as well, every now and then a different one bringing him something to either drink or eat. He's a bachelor, all right, but at least now he's being less handsy, which proves that previous behavior was aimed at me. I still don't understand why, It's, but it's nice to see the wolf I know. He notices my not-so-discreet glances and grins. Vool! Want to arm wrestle? I gaze to the Grey Wolf in surprise, as this comes out of nowhere. He doesn't seem drunk, but he's clearly intoxicated with all the intention he's getting, and he's fishing to get some from me. 
I frown, seeing Vol smirking with almost wild satisfaction. Want me to humiliate you twice in the same day? I feel this time luck is on my side. The Grey Wolf winks at me and I blink, hoping no one saw this. It's hard to stop a blush from creeping onto my cheeks. Vol scoffs and simply scoots over, pushing me with his warm body out of the way, effectively taking my spot in front of Rannick. Their arms rest on the table, easily breaching the distance between the two sides. I look attentively as their left paw paws lock in place, while the wolves measure each other with anticipation. I don't know why I get nervous, but it might have something to do with all the wolves suddenly paying close attention to the event. Suddenly their muscles tense up and I can almost see veins perk up underneath the fur on their biceps. Soft growls escape their throats and fangs begin to show ever so slightly as they strain against each other. And we're gonna wait till the next episode to see how that arm wrestling match ends, but I'm betting that Vool is the one who's gonna come out on top. Wow, what an episode. Man, Tano is very manipulative, but I bet there's I still I bet there's more to him. I still have hope for him to grow as a character. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, ooh, excuse me, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!